Yikes, the evil teachings of Jesus? Isn't Jesus God? How could he have given any evil teachings? Well, wait and see. Okay, here I am at Google. It's May 3rd, 2023. I'm searching on child dies because parents' religious beliefs. Here's a two-year-old that died, had pneumonia. Her parents wouldn't let her be treated because of their religious beliefs, and she died. Uh, it says here that more than 180 children have died since faith-based healing exemption was enacted in, in the 70s. But a faith-based healing exemption means that if the parent lets the child dies, they can't be prosecuted for child abuse. Pemethyl died. Her parents refused help, religious beliefs. Parents refused medical help. Newborn dies because parents' religious beliefs, etc., etc. Now, as I said, it's May 3rd, 2023. Whenever you watch this video, do the same search. And you'll see a different crop of children who have died due to the evil teachings of Jesus. This has been going on for centuries. It'll continue going on until those teachings are acknowledged to be false and evil because they kill children. A handy source of uh, biblical quotes is the Skeptic's Annotated Bible. Now, if we go, go there and we go to what the Bible says about medical science, we'll see things that Jesus said. Uh, by the way, um, there's about 34 miracles of Jesus in the New Testament, and about 23 of them, Jesus heals someone. And he heals by... Well, let's see. Uh, diseases, the evil spirits go out of them, and they're cured. Jesus teaches that disease is caused by sin and by demons. And he teaches that the way to, to cure is fasting and prayer and laying on of hands, etc. You, you can read all this at your leisure. It's an evil, evil teaching, and it's causing children to die today. It's causing children to die whenever you watch this video and it'll cause children to die probably for the next few centuries until these evil teachings of Jesus are acknowledged to be wrong. But I suppose uh, a believing Christian would say, well, gosh, uh, Jesus taught it, and I have to follow it because he's my Lord and Master. Yeah, not really. Um, here's something that Jesus says. This is Jesus speaking, and he says in the plainest possible language, don't take oaths. This is Matthew 5, and we're at verse 33. Again, go check it at your leisure. Jesus is clearly saying, don't take oaths. Christians can't be bothered following that. They take oaths when they, in court, do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. They even put their hand on the Bible. They take oaths when they enter the military, if they assume political office. In the United States, uh, children who recite the Pledge of Allegiance every day are reciting an oath. So Christians really don't follow Jesus. They follow their preachers. They follow what their preachers and priests say Jesus said. Unfortunately, sometimes Jesus said what the preachers are saying, and what he said is evil. And here's another one that hardly any Christians follow. Uh, it's about divorce. And Christians get divorced uh, as frequently as anybody else. So there are teachings of Jesus which, thankfully, Christians do not follow because their preachers don't mention those teachings. Well, here are two. It's actually one teaching in two places. Whoever curses his father or mother shall be put to death. Whoever curses his father or mother shall surely be put to death. These are evil, evil teachings. I mean, many of us have had a rough time, in, especially in our teenage years, or our children have, and it's not uncommon, perhaps, for a child to have cursed a parent, if, they, if only under their breath. Would they be put to death? No, of course not. Now, someone might say, wait a minute, this is from the Old Testament. Well, first of all, Jesus said he and his father were one. So if his father was inspiring these verses, Jesus wasn't there saying, now, wait a minute, Dad, I don't think we're right. we got to think about this. He was saying, yeah, Dad, you and I are one. Worse yet, in the New Testament, this is Jesus himself speaking. Jesus himself speaking, for God commanded, honor your father and mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. 
Here is God saying that God said, kill the cursing child. Jesus says it again, but here he just says, Moses said. Okay. Pretty bad teaching. And if we dig in to Matthew 15, there's Matthew 15, 4, which we just saw. But the context is even worse. The Pharisees say to Jesus, your disciples break the tradition of the elders. They don't wash their hands. Jesus replied to the Pharisees, and you break the command of God. For God said, anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. That's pretty straightforward. You Pharisees ignore God's command. God said, kill the cursing child. This is straight from Jesus himself, who is God, supposedly. It's an evil, evil, evil teaching that luckily no Christians follow because Christians follow their preachers and their priests. They think they're followers of Jesus. They're fans of Jesus. They think he's a really great guy. But when it comes down to actually following, they don't follow him, which is good in this case. They follow their priests and their preachers. Now, some Christians are going to be outraged that I dared to criticize this character in the New Testament, who they've decided is a god. But Christians have no problem criticizing gays and um, criticizing scientists for believing in evolution, criticizing people who get divorced, etc., etc., etc. They have no problem doing that. Okay, fine. Freedom of speech. You can say what you believe. I'm saying what I believe. And what I'm saying is, is that the book that starts out with a talking serpent and later has the story about this guy who walked on water and rose from the dead is um, fictional. Someone named Jesus might have lived, but the stuff you hear about him is mostly just made up stuff. Okay, thanks for listening.